So hybridization state affecting acidity. How does it affect acidity? So let's use the examples. versus something like this. Okay. So what I can tell you, the data would say the pKa for this is lower than the pKa for this or this. So let's just, I can just draw the, the pKa's for this would be 25, let's say. PKA for this would be 65. PKA for this is going to be 50. So just looking at the PKA values, what does that tell you? That the SP is the Right. We have an SP hybridized carbon. We have a SP3 hybridized carbon. And we have an SP2 hybridized carbon. So it, obviously it tells me hybridization state of, somehow is affecting acidity. So much so that right, there's a big jump here from SP2 to SP where all of a sudden the PK becomes more reasonable, right? These are just crazy numbers. There's way out of, like, these are never going to be acidic. Whereas this is, could be acidic. So why is that? That's the question. Why? So you look and you say, well, wait a second. Which one of these, so there's CH bonds, right? They're all the same. CH bond, CH bond, CH bond. But they're not all the same because this is a S orbital bonded to what hybrid orbital is making this sigma bond right here? What hybrid orbital from this carbon is making that sigma bond? An SP or hybrid orbital, right? What hybrid orbital from this carbon is making this sigma bond? S3. And what hybrid orbital from this carbon is making this sigma bond? SP2. All right. SP hybrid orbitals are shorter and smaller, right? The actual strongest bond is this one. That is the most orbital overlap. So that doesn't make any sense as far as acidity goes. So that must not be the most important factor, right? Remember, when we do reactions, one of two things is taking place. Either the starting material has reactive starting materials or bonds, and or it forms a really stable or more stable product. So in this case, right, these CH bonds, right, CH bonds are not reactive. Just a fact, right? We know that. They're not polar. So what must be going on here must be something about the products of these reactions, right? The conjugate bases of these. So what's going on here, so let's draw out the conjugate bases. All right? So what are the conjugate bases going to be? Negative charge. So I'll ask you again now, what hybrid orbital is that lone pair in? No. It's an SP orbital. Notice, right, again, hybridization state I always boxed in. Hybrid orbitals I'm not boxing in. Difference between hybrid state and hybrid orbitals. Don't forget that. What about this lone pair for the SP3? Where is that? For the SP3 hybridized carbon, where is this lone pair now located? It's in an sp3 orbital. And then one more over for the sp2 hybridized. Where is that lone pair located? It's in an sp2 orbital. So now there must be, so we've already decided there's nothing different, that different about these that makes me think one should be more reactive than the other. If anything, it's the opposite. Right? This is the shortest bond. So I, this, is make, you know, this is hard to understand. So it must be something about the products that's making this go. And what's the difference? Where this lone pair goes? What type of hybrid orbital that lone pair goes in? So what do you guys know about the hybrid orbitals? So SP, remember, is more S, has more S character. SP3 is that tall, skinny one. And SP2 is kind of splitting the difference. One SP is close to the nucleus. 
So it's going to be more happy holding that lone pair tighter. That's going to make it a more stable interaction, right? Opposites attract. So this hybrid orbital is much more able to stabilize those two, lone, those two electrons than ones that, the hybrid orbitals that are farther away from the nucleus. That's the key. It's not the starting materials here to look at. It's actually the stability of the products. And they're stable because of the hybrid orbital where the lone pair ends up going to and how close or far away it is from the nucleus, which has, of course, the positively charged protons. Opposites attract.